Well, hey everybody, welcome to Ashley Ridge Church Online. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning from wherever you're watching this from. We've been doing this a while, right folks? But it's so good for us to be connected in the ways that we can be connected. And we're glad you're here today. And speaking of being connected, we have got some exciting stuff right on the horizon for the next ways that we are going to connect with you and your family. And specifically, we have some new opportunities coming from the AR Kids crew. And so we wanted to give you a little more information about what's coming up real soon. So check out this video from the AR Kids team. Hey everyone, welcome to AR Kids Game Changers! It is time to get this party started! <laughs> Welcome to the most heart-pounding, fist-pumping, show-stopping competition AR Kids has ever seen. I'm Nancy. And I'm Elizabeth. And we are here to lead you guys at home as you face off in a head-to-head -head grade competition that's going to go down in history. Yeah, it is. Six teams will be playing against each other. So you will be playing to win points for your team as well as prizes for yourself. Here is how this is going to work. First of all, you need to know what team you're on. And just remember, teams are based on the grade you just completed. Let's meet our teams now. They may be tiny, but they are mighty. Representing AR Littles, we have Gold Rush. If you just finished kindergarten, you are on the Team Blue Wave. All right, where are all the newly graduated first graders? You guys are on Team Green Thunder. Orange Crush is next, and that's for you, second graders. Ooh, I can feel the heat with those third graders. You are on Team Red Inferno. Last but not least, we have Blackout. Woo! This is for all the Circle 45 students. Oh, and I know they are a competitive bunch. <laughs> no joke. Do you want to hear some more awesome news? Yeah. Do you want to hear some more awesome news? You will not be cheering on your team alone. Each Game Changer team has a super fan to help them out this summer. All right, so let's meet them now and see who is ready to win. Woo! Okay, team, let's go. Here we go, can't be slow. Gold Rush. Here we go, can't be slow. Gold Rush, woo, Gold Rush! Get ready, everyone, because the tide is rolling in. Na, 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 na. With Game Changers, it is more than a competition. Exactly. We're going to be learning all month long how to be a Game Changer. Each one of you sitting at home right now has the opportunity to change the game in your home, in your neighborhood, in your friendships. Because when you love people the way Jesus loves us, it is a Game Changer. Yes, it is. Let's not forget, we have a Bible verse that we're gonna focus on all summer that's gonna help us with that very thing. Absolutely, it comes from the book 1 Thessalonians 5.11 and it says, therefore encourage one another and build each other up. I mean, I think that's pretty important. 
absolutely. But hey, let's not forget to tell them how we're going to kick this whole thing off. They're gonna love it. Good idea, good idea. July 12th, come on, you heard me. Parents, are you listening? July 12th. Parents! We wanna see you at the Ashley Ridge High School parking lot between 5 and 6 p.m. for a drive through pickup. But not just any drive through, nope. it's an AR Kids drive through. Woo! Your small group leaders will be there to cheer you on in their team colors. And we want you to be in your team colors too. Don't forget to do that, okay guys? Because you can make a poster, you can decorate your car, you can cheer out of the sunroof. Sun <laughs> because we are gonna be looking for the team with the most spirit. And when you drive through, you'll be given a packet that will go hand in hand with yep. that week's AR Kids online experience. Yes. You wanna play the games? You can, because you will have all of the supplies. Absolutely. You wanna dig deeper with your family into the Bible story for that week? You can, because you'll have that right at your fingertips too. Ooh, and we also can't forget to tell you, starting July 12th, you can watch AR Kids online family experience on Sunday. Sunday. Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Don't forget, okay? So grab your packet, watch at seven or on demand later that week. And don't forget to log your points for competing in the games. I mean, you want your team to win, right? Yes. All the details for the games and how to log your points will be included in your weekly packet. Yes, very important. So join us as we kick off a whole new summer of Game Changers. Play along for some head-to-head -head grade level competition and we will learn that loving our friends like Jesus can be the real Game Changers! Well, thanks, Nancy and Elizabeth. I'm so excited about the ways that we're going to be together in the ways that we can coming up here real soon. Right now, we're going to sing a few songs together and then Pastor Jen's gonna come and we're gonna continue with our Better For It series that we kicked off last Sunday. And then we're gonna have a time of response. We're so glad you're here. Y'all stand, let's sing together. Thou raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies And I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My way Now raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me And I'm gonna
believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. So I'm wondering if any of you might be feeling a little bit tired. I think a lot of us are there and I heard a pastor by the name of Levi Lusco describe it this way this week. He said, the tired we feel as though, is as though we're in a triathlon and we didn't know it. And so we ran a marathon thinking that we were getting to the finish line only when we got there, someone handed us a bike. And then the best part of it was that someone quickly commented on the illustration that he made and said, yes, and even more to the point, the bike is disassembled. <laughs> do you feel that? I know that I do. We're on week 13, 14. I've lost count of, of this whole experience. And it looks different in different places. And I know a lot of you are watching from lots of different places, but collectively, not just our country, but our world has experienced this massive interruption. And it's brought an interruption to our lives. It's brought an interruption to our busy. And it has shown us perhaps in ways we weren't fully understanding just how tired we are. Because for a lot of us, we were tired before this started. And now we're tired in a whole nother level. Now, here's the deal. And I know that, that we're all wired a little bit differently and, and I get teased for a lot of the aspects of my wiring and I bet that you do too. But my instincts in a moment like this, if I'm crossing the finish line and then someone hands me a bike or if I'm tired and there's still more to do, my instincts tell me that I should dig deeper and I should work harder. And the next thing that I should do is find a way to level up. And that probably gives away some of my childhood. I was, I was a child in the 80s and 90s when Mario was becoming a thing. And so when in doubt, you just, you level up. At least I think that's a thing. My parents didn't get us a Nintendo. We had to go to my cousins to play. But, but there's this whole concept of leveling up. 
And for a lot of us, that's what the culture, that's what our, our families, that's what has been taught to us our entire life. If you just work harder, if you just work smarter, if you just try more, if you just get more efficient, we've got all sorts of ways and designs around doing things more effectively and better and better and better. In fact, we have a joke on our team. One of our cultural values is better, not more, except a lot of times we joke about how we can have better and more. That's how we've been taught to handle life. When things aren't working, you should just work harder. And if you can't work harder, then you should probably feel guilty because you can't get the job done. And for some of you, that means you're ready to give up. We've talked about that in recent weeks. We've talked about this season that we're in and all that it's brought to the surface. But I wanna go back to Levi's metaphor for a minute of having finished a race and getting handed a bike because one of the things that has been new to me in the last couple years is this sport, this activity of cycling. In fact, I'm so new to it that I still mostly call it biking and, and real cyclers keep harassing me about that. And so as I've been learning the bike, one of the things I've been trying to figure out is the gear shifts. Now here's why this matters is that where all of our instincts, or maybe if you are running a race and, and you're, you know, you're feeling tired and you realize you just have to dig deeper, there's a different mentality around a bike and it all has to do with the gear shifts. So here's how the gear shifts work, is that you switch into a different gear which lowers the resistance on the bike pedals themselves, and I won't pretend to explain which gear and that gear and rear gears and front gears and all of those kinds of things, but this is a, a real general, go with me, understanding of this, is that when you're riding a bike, you're going to lower the resistance of the bike pedals itself in order to match the resistance that you're dealing with in the terrain that you're on. So what that means is if you're going downhill, you're going to increase the resistance of the bike so that you can maintain control. You need a way to grab hold of the wheels so that they just don't fly out of hand. But the opposite side of that is that when you are going up a hill, then all the resistance you ever wanted or didn't even ask for is there in the hill itself, which means that on the bike, you've got to lower the gears, you've got to lower the resistance to help you deal with the resistance that is already there. So here's what that means for you and me. We are in a season where we can't seem to stop going uphill. We are in a season that even when it feels like we're starting to, to maybe get back to some things, then numbers start to go up again, or we try to go back to work, but childcare is still a big issue. And no matter what we do, we're still in this season where we're off kilter and life feels very uphill, even in the low country where I'm standing right now. It feels like it's one mountain after another with don't, no downhill, to recover. And so knowing that all the resistance is already there in front of us, what that means for us is not that we need to level up or work harder or dig deeper, but instead we need to learn a lesson from the bike in that we need to find a way to shift gears. We need to move ourselves into a, a different rhythm and a different mode. Think about it this way. We have to find ways, knowing that the resistance is already in front of us, to lower our internal resistance. Andy Stanley, in introducing this idea of better for it that we, um, that we watched last week as a church, he said it this way. He said, pain without gain is shame. Pain without gain is a shame. And so the truth is pain is this resistance, this hard season, this ever growing longer season of difficulty has introduced pain for all of us. There is no shortage of pain 
around us. And, and friends, I just want you to know that I've been feeling it from you. And I've been feeling my own version of it, but I continue to be reminded that everyone's story is a little bit different in this. And some of you are experiencing levels of pain and loss and difficulty in, in unimaginable spheres. And so the truth is, what do we do with that pain and that resistance? How can we find ways to shift gears so that ultimately, we are, when we make it to the top of the hill, and y'all, hear me say this, we will make it to the top of the hill. We will make it to the peak. Where we are now is not where we will always be. Keep remembering that, y'all. Where we are now is not where we will always be. And so when we get there, are we gonna find ourselves in a position to go with the wind down the hill? Will we be better positioned for the effort and the experience of what we've gone through? And I think the answer can be yes, but it's a question of what are we doing now to handle it? How are we responding well, if you watched the other two messages in Andy's Better For It series, and I really hope you do, he talks about that, our superpower of how we respond and what we choose in these moments. But the question is, will we be better for it? And it means that right now, we have to learn to shift gears. Andy's been asking these three questions with this idea of how can we be better for it? And what have we been doing that almost led to our undoing? And what should we begin doing that we should have been doing all along? In other words, how can we shift gears in how we're doing things? And y'all, some of this, some of this, you, you might not even be a follower of Jesus and you're tuning in and, and I am so thrilled that you're part of this conversation with us. And, and some of this, is, is just relevant to all of us, no matter where you are in a faith life, in, in just a life-life standpoint, we know some of the ways that we can lower the resistance in our life. Some of you just need to sleep, right? When, when we're tired, we need to sleep, not forego more sleep to get more done. We actually get less done. We need to sleep. You need to eat a little bit better. Some of us been quarantining, binging, eating junk, eating our feelings and now we've been doing it for three months y'all we got to lower the resistance we got to eat a little bit better drink a little bit less we need to sleep more we need to do the things that we can do to lower the resistance but as followers of Jesus there's a whole bigger picture of how God is inviting us to experience this season differently. And it's going to mean pushing back against some of the instincts we have to dig deeper and work harder, learning a different understanding of what it might mean to shift gears. And to explain that, I, I want to go to one of the most familiar people in Scripture. If you grew up in the church, you've probably heard of him your whole life. His name is Zerubbabel. Y'all heard of him? Super familiar? Okay, obviously, I'm kidding. I had to look up all the different pronunciations to figure out how to say the guy's name, and nobody knows. So that's the one that I'm making up. But there's this guy named Zerubbabel, and he was made the governor of Judah after the Israelites were coming back from exile. So again, let me, let me paint a bigger picture here. So in the Old Testament, God called Abraham, um, Father Abraham, who was to be the father of these many nations. He said, you're gonna have all these descendants. And then, you know, eventually he did. And then his grandson, Jacob, had 12 more sons and they became these tribes of Israel. And God was working out this promise of, I need to start with one group of people. And if I can help y'all figure out how to live differently and shift gears differently and love differently and act differently, then maybe the whole world might get this picture. Now, 
Ultimately, it, it didn't work all that well and we needed Jesus, which is where the whole thing was going anyway. But, but God is doing something with this group of people. But over and over and over again, they keep getting things wrong. Because when things don't go their way, they decide, well, we'll work harder and we'll dig deeper, which for them meant we'll figure out a way around. And so they kept creating their own idols. They kept trying all these things separate and apart from what God was pointing them toward. Does that sound familiar to any of y'all? Right? Can't go through it. Can't go around it. I'll go over it. I'll invent something. I'll figure it out for my self. Well, that's what they were doing too. And God kept sending these prophets at the time who were telling them this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. God has another way for us to live our lives. But, but people kept falling back into those instinctual habits until eventually God got to this place where he's like, look, we're going to have to change the whole picture in order for you to understand this. And so what happened was eventually God allowed his people to be led into exile. Other kingdoms, specifically the Babylonians and the Persians, came in and they destroyed the temple where the people were figuring out how to worship and live in relationship to God. And they carried the people away into exile. Only the whole time God kept telling them, this isn't the end of the story. This isn't the end of the story. There's more still to come. Where you are right now is not where you're always going to be. Because when my people will call on my name, I will hear them and I will bring them back from the north and the south and the east and the west. Well, so then we get back to our friend Zerubbabel, who's talked about by the prophet Zechariah. And Zechariah was a prophet, a spokesperson for God who was sent as the people were coming back after the exile. They were coming back to these areas that were familiar. And this is also, I think, going to resonate. It certainly resonates with me. They came back with an expectation that they could pick up life where they had left it. Only they got to the finish line and were handed a disassembled bike. They got back and nothing was as it was. One of the things that we've talked about over and over and over again in recent weeks in all of our various circles is that there's not going to be a return to life as we knew it. The, the rules have changed. Things have shifted in these months. And some of it is going to be a really good thing as we get back to life together. Will we be better for it? But sometimes it's hard in those moments when you're still looking at the hill because all you see is the brokenness, not the rebuilding, not the finished product that can be better than the one that we had before. You just see all that is left to be done, to be figured out, to be negotiated, school, oh my goodness, all that we have to sort through in order to get there. And so here's Zechariah and he's been sent to talk to the people and he has this series of visions where he's trying to explain to them and show them through these visions that God is giving him what this rebuilding process is going to look like. And really the overall message for Zechariah is that God has everything in place to make this happen. Zechariah was sent to encourage the people. I feel like I have been sent here this morning to your screen, wherever you are, to encourage you in this moment that God knows the gears you need and he already has everything in place for you to be better for it. God has everything we need to make it happen. And so we meet up in this place. I'm in Zechariah chapter 4 into one of his visions and the understanding of what God is trying to show him about this process. So here I am in Zechariah 4 chapter um, verse 1. 
It says, then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. When you get uh, awakened from sleep, are you like totally with it and on top of it right away? Probably not. Someone wakes me up in the middle of the night. One of my kids appears over my head. It's this terrifying nightmare. All right. So here's Zechariah. He's having all these visions. He gets awakened in the middle of this thing. And the angel asks him, what did you see? And I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamps. That sounds like some of my dreams, right? I saw all these things that make absolutely no sense. I probably had seven bowls of cereal and there was a light on and somehow it all came together in my dream. And he's like, so there's a lampstand and there's a bowl and there's seven lamps and seven channels to the lamps. And also there are two olive trees by it, right? Because that's what you always find by your lamps is two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and the other is on the left. And I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? And Lord very clearly being lower cased in this instance, he's learning. This angel has been walking him through these visions. And he says, what, what does all of that mean? The angel answered, you don't know? Right, actually he says, do you not know what these are? And, and Zechariah says, uh-uh, no, I got nothing. Why would I begin to know what to do with these pieces? I have no idea how to put a bike together. I have no idea how this road goes, how this mountain looks. I don't know where the bends are. No one gave me the map to this circumstance. I have never been married before in a pandemic. I have never parented before in a pandemic. I have never worked through a pandemic before. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with these pieces. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zeru Zerubbabel. I was going to change how I said it that time. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. So this is what Zechariah is to share with the governor, the one who's leading the people through this process. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? I love this, right? Here's where we, we feel this connection. They're looking at a mountain. They're staring down all of their difficulties. They're feeling all of the resistance. And the angel says, no, 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 no. Here it is. You go tell the people this is a word directly from the Lord. And he says, not by power, not by might, not by leveling up, not by digging deeper, not by figuring out who to, how to do life with next, without sleep, not by figuring out how to do 18 tasks at the same time, not by power, not by the wisdom of man, but by my spirit says, the Lord. And if you can get that gear right, we're going to talk about it more in a minute, but if you can get that gear right, then what even are you? Mighty mountain. The mountain that loomed large when you were trying to go to sleep last night. The pieces that feel big and unknown. What even are you? And he goes on, he says, I'll tell you what you are. Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. You will become like ground that is laid out even and smooth and passable. Mighty mountain, you are nothing in the sight of the Lord. There is nothing in front of us that God doesn't know or understand or see. You felt some of those moments you feel tired because you're feeling like, whew, does anyone even know what I'm staring down? Does anyone even know the, the fears and the difficulties and the challenges of my life? I'll tell you who knows. Your Heavenly Father knows. And he says, all of those things, I will make them in front of you level ground. And I love this. And he says, and then he will bring out the calps capstone to shouts of God bless it, God bless it. 
And I think I particularly love it because one of my newer catchphrases in the midst of this season has just been, bless it all. And I think I'm using that in a little bit of a different tone than here, but I love how God just comes back into this and he says, I'm going to take all the pieces of resistance and I'm going to make the level plain, not by your power, not by your might, but by my spirit. And when it happens, I want you to look in front of you and go, God bless it. God bless the road that got me here. It sounds like a country song. God bless the pain that brought me to this moment where I can now ride better, live better, love better, sacrifice better than I ever did before. But it didn't happen by the power and the might. It happened by shifting gears, right? He says, not by power, not by white. In other words, no amount of leveling up is going to get us through, and it certainly won't make us better. It's time to shift gears. Some of you right now, what have you been doing that is not working? I'll tell you some of it. You've been worrying. It's not getting you anywhere. You've been trying to understand all the things. That's not helping all that much. There's lots of information out there. It's hard to sort through it all. Some of you have been trying to grasp at things to feel some measure of control in an uncontrollable situation. That's not working. That's not working either. It's time to shift gears. And here's what that looks like. This is not, not by power, not by might but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Let me say it to you this way, and this is going to take us to a story where I want to finish today about Jesus outside the town of Samaria. By my spirit, says the Lord, when you've been tired in these days, what is the well that you have been sitting beside to try and fill yourself up again? When you've been tired in these days and, and you try to step away and you try to recoup or you collapse somewhere, where is it that you've been collapsing? Because here's the thing, for a lot of us, we've been sitting in some of the wrong places. <laughs> We've been sitting in front of news feeds that are leaving us nothing but frustrated. We've been sitting in front of endless cycles of echo chambers and cancel cultures and conversations that aren't actually conversations, just a bunch of people trying to get their thoughts and opinions out there. We're sitting in places where we're consuming all these things and then we're wondering why we feel heavier and the resistance feels stronger when Jesus actually invited us to sit by a well where he said I can take some of your burden away so there was this moment where Jesus was with his disciples and he told them that they needed to go through Samaria and, and he didn't really explain why and Samaria wasn't anywhere that anybody really wanted to go and, and there were lots of issues there but Jesus told them nonetheless that they needed to go through Samaria. Now the funny thing about this particular story that John tells us in John chapter 4 is that Jesus never actually ended up going to Samaria but instead they got to this place outside of the town where the well was and it says that Jesus sat down by the well, and, and, and I don't want you to miss this, he sat down tired. I listened to a message the other week by um, Stephen Furtick, and, and I love this. He drew this piece out, and he said, isn't it good sometimes to remember that we have a God who knows what it is to be tired? 
Because even though God is the creator of the ends of the earth and he does not grow tired or weary, and that's what Isaiah painted a picture of in his words of prophecy years and years and years ago, God knew that we needed to see him completely in human form feeling what we feel. And so here's Jesus and he gets to outside Samaria to this well and it says that he sat down tired. He sat down tired and and I don't think he was just physically tired. I think he was tired of all of the people and all of the things because then he looked at his disciples and he goes, why don't you go into town and find something for us to eat? I'm going to sit here where no one is quietly by myself. Some of you have felt that. You can just say it in your living room right now. Praise Jesus. I want to sit here where no one else is and hear my own thoughts. Jesus was tired and he sat down. Only he sat down by a very specific well with a very specific appointment that was about to happen when the woman from Samaria came to fill her well, to fill her her water jugs. And she came also at a time when there wouldn't be many people because she was tired. She'd been living a life that many would have said was less than reputable. She was living a life where she was trying to find her way and make ends meet and it just wasn't happening. Until one day she showed up at a well where Jesus had sat down tired. And the first thing he asked her was, could you get me some water? (laughs) But then this led to a conversation where interestingly, Jesus never actually gets water. And then even when his disciples get back with food, he's like, nah, I'm good. Because what Jesus needed in that moment of tired and what the woman needed as she showed up tired was the opportunity to sit by a different well. Jesus said a well that would not run dry. You see, we're not just tired, we're soul weary. And it's because for far too long, even before this began, we've been sitting by the wrong wells. We've been filling up with the wrong pieces. We've been fueling for the race but we haven't been using the right pieces and then we wonder why we're tired. And there's an invitation in this season where Jesus says, but let me show you a new well. Let me show you a new way to deal with the tired. Let me invite you to a different gear that's gonna get us up the mountain because this is what I love. While Jesus sat down tired and needed to have a conversation about a well, the conversation ends with Jesus saying, you think the harvest is four months from now. You think life's gonna get back to normal months from now and we're gonna go back to the town and we're gonna pick up the pieces and that just isn't so. Jesus said, the harvest is right now. The fields are ripe. There is a mountain in front of us and we are not gonna back down. But there is a gear that he would love to show us. A gear that doesn't just get us up this mountain, but a gear that teaches us to live differently. And it starts by sitting at the right well. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And even when we do talk about the power that God has given us, it's God's spirit that is in us. It is his power, his might. It's what he did for us. When we were lonely, tired, lost, scared, and couldn't get out of it ourselves, God sent Jesus who said, I'll do the heavy lifting. And now you need to live by my spirit, which means you got to fill up differently. Some of us have been for a long time now allowing ourselves to be discipled by the wrong things and it shows. And right now in this moment, we have an opportunity to decide to sit by a well that brings living water. 
by the well of Jesus who teaches us to live and love differently. By a well where Jesus shows us what it is to sacrifice what we think we want now for the joy of what our Heavenly Father has laid out for those of us who would call on his name. You have a choice to make this afternoon. It's not Father's Day. It's not, it's not a holiday this time around. You have a choice to make today. How are you going to spend your time? How are you going to fill up in this moment? How are you going to sit by a well and put in the stuff you actually need? Y'all, this is not a season to run through and pray less. We need to sit with God. We need to let him speak into our lives. We need to let him be the voice that leads us. And we need to shut out some of the other voices that are dominating and are feeding our anxiety. Jesus says, you want to hear my voice? Get quiet. Be still. Come and sit with me. Let's pray. God, I'm so grateful that you went out of your way to know and understand and show us that you weren't going to wait for us to come to you, but that you were going to show up right in the middle of where we were in our tiredness. That in Jesus, you came the whole way into our lives and into our circumstances. And God, for everyone who is listening today, as we turn to you today, God, would, would you allow us to sit in the knowledge that you see and you know all of our circumstances? And God, I pray that we could draw comfort from that thought. But God, I also pray that we would be a people who understand that we're not going to get through this by working harder and digging deeper, but by learning to trust in the work of your spirit. The work of your spirit that needs to draw conviction in places in our lives. The work of your spirit that needs to draw out some of the groans that we haven't figured out how to express. God, we need you to do your work in us. And so God, will you help us lower our resistance? Will you help us stop filling our, our time endlessly with, with tasks and, and, and mindless things and instead seek after you. God, we want to be better for having walked through this season with you. God, we're trusting that you can do something with all of these pieces. We're trusting that you can make good come even from this. And so God, will you help us? Will you help us shift gears? Will you show us that this bike, disassembled though it may be, has all the pieces in place? For us to live with you forever. God, make our mountains become level ground. We trust you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks, Pastor Jen, for that reminder. It's so timely that it's just time for us to sit beside a different well, put the bike together, and keep going up the Hill. I've been loving this Better For It series, and I hope you have been too. Share this message. You can do that from the Ashley Ridge app or from our website or from wherever you're watching this now, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or even our podcast. There's someone else that you know who's close to you but far from God who needs to take advantage of this time and how they can be better for it. And we believe as Christians that Jesus following him will make our life better. It'll make us better at life. And he's the best answer to all the questions that we're asking. We can't wait to pick up and continue on with this series next week with Pastor Jen. But in the meantime, thanks so much for joining us today. We want to help you take a next step toward Jesus, whatever that may look like. You can do that by filling out a connect card. Go to cc.ashleyridgechurch.org or click the button in the app or in the toolbar if you're watching 
in church online. You can leave us a prayer request. You can let us know that you'd like to be baptized or jump in with a small group or talk to us. Let us know about anything that's going on. We want to help you take a step towards Jesus today. And speaking of connection and taking next steps, make sure you're signed up for our email list. Make sure that you are visiting our website and tuned into our social media with a follow on Instagram or Facebook. We've updated the homepage of our main website with easier access for you for online family content. You'll see all that new information there and it's also available on the home screen of the app. And before we go today, we couldn't leave without saying thank you for the ways that you are continuing to be generous and partnering with us to make all these great new things like AR Kids happen and worship happen and Hearts for Somerville and that outreach and all the great stuff that you're doing. And we're just grateful that you're continuing to support this ministry financially. If this is your home church, or even if you just wanna jump in and be a part financially of what God is doing here in Somerville and at Ashley Ridge Church, all that information can be found right here. You can do it in the app, you can text, you can send a carrier pigeon, you can uh, mail a check the good old fashioned way, but thank you for your continued generosity. We can't wait to see you next week. We'll see you online. We'll see you right here, wherever you are. Share this message. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Be intentional. Be purposeful. We love you. God bless you. Y'all have a great, great week.